you know, Neil has talked about better effort, second half. Did you watch film? What did you see defensively the first and second half? I don't know if the effort was better. I think uh, I think they didn't have the edge that they had. So um, when you're up, whatever it was at halftime, it was a lot. Um, I'm sure you don't have the same, like I said, after the game. Uh, I mean, yeah, we may have executed things a little bit better, but uh, we had to, we had to figure out, and, and a lot of us still don't know what we were trying to do uh, with some of our stuff, especially in the front seven. So we we uh, we tried to make some adjustments going into the game to simplify some things for some of the guys, and um, they anyway. It was like. It's like we obviously made a mistake with that because what we thought was simple froze them up, and so we didn't play with the aggression that we need to. Um, we had a meeting in this room yesterday where uh, we started off the meeting with uh, the quote by Belichick, just do your job, and which was about the best way I can say it. Um, Guys, too many guys were, were not doing what they're supposed to do. And um, we did not execute. You know, we, we missed. We had our hands on Kelly Bryant five times that are unexcusable that we don't get. So we didn't get those sacks. And those were, and they scored on three of those drives. Um, you know, we had a pick six that we baited them into throwing that we didn't execute well enough. And guy hits us in the back. And should probably should have could or whatever been called, wasn't. But we still got to trigger and make that play. Uh, there's things you know, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda stuff. Uh, the message to the defensive guys yesterday was that we're way more capable than what we showed, and that we have got to do uh, probably three. I'm narrow it down to three things. We've got to have more courage. Courage, and I say that in a way, courage to make plays. You, you can't just freeze up. Um, you, uh, you've got to be relentless, and, and when I mean relentless, I mean you've got to be tough. It is when you get out there, you know, I don't want to liken it to war because war is life and death, and this isn't life and death, but you got to, it's a fight. And anyone that's ever played this game, especially in the front seven, it's a fight. And if you're not willing to, to fight and and go to a place, and you hear me kind of getting a little bit inspired right here. If you're not willing to go to a place that's a little bit nuts, it's a little bit crazy, then you're not going to be able to play this game. And we had too many guys that that didn't go to that place. They 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 uh, nice guys, uh, happy to be there, enjoying the Golden Girls or whatever they were doing there. Uh, so we we've got to inspire our players to get to that place where they can play tough and physical within the rules 100%. But we, we and we missed 22 tackles. We practice tackling every day uh, or some phase of tackling every day. Uh, and most of that was, um, I would say, most of the missing tackles was being at the wrong angles or not having our eyes in the right place or not using our help. So we created one-on-one -on -one tackles, and you know they got guys on scholarship too. And in a one-on-one -on -one environment, they're going to win some. Uh, and some of it is Kelly Bryant probably still got that S uniform on. Um, you know he just threw us around like rag dolls. So we we, we got to play um, way more, way more inspired. And then the third thing is we got to do what we're supposed to do. We did things in the game that I've never seen our guys do in practice. Uh, we have running plays coming right at defensive linemen that are popping up and running twist games that you run in pass. And there was no part of any of that that was pass. So we had, you know, we had some guys that we just have to, we have to coach them better, but we got to inspire them better. And uh, we didn't like reinvent the wheel schematically. There wasn't anything they shouldn't have been able to execute. We had two other plays where it was actually it was one player didn't rush on the outside. That there was nobody to block him if he just went. So there was two other opportunities for that sack. So what should have been the storyline of the game was West Virginia has nine sacks versus Missouri. 
ended up not being the storyline of the game. So we got a lot of work to do. Uh, I know our staff has rolled up its sleeves, not that we hadn't before, but we've got to find that fine edge that that uh, can convince these guys that they're capable of being as good as they want to be. And that was the message to them yesterday. And we showed them where if they just do what they're supposed to do, the plays will come to them and we'll be as good as we want to be. Otherwise, if we don't and you start doing their own stuff and not playing with vigor and courage and, and in that other place I talked about getting to, uh, then, then it'll be it'll be a lot harder year than what it ought to be. How do you your defensive ends are concerned? How much does the loss of Alston for the well, year? Well, it, it doesn't help. Obviously, it puts more uh, puts more emphasis on the other two guys, and then we can't we don't have the ability to juggle those guys at other positions. So it's it's definitely a depth issue. Um, we're we're not as deep in any position as we need to be. We're scrambling to, to find backup guys in a lot of positions, and that's just the way it is. And uh, um, I know I used a Joel Osteen quote last week or two weeks ago, but I heard him say this morning, actually driving in, was that, uh, you know, the good Lord is uh, – he, he, he has you build a foundation. And Coach Brown said this to us, you know, we have one year to build a foundation that we're going to – that we're going to build this program on. And we have got to build a foundation of toughness and courage and doing things right and attention to detail. And uh, we're going to hold our guys accountable. And that we're going to have to have some guys step up to answer your question. And I'm expecting them to do that. How do you feel about the player linebackers? And John Not Harris very good. Before? Not very good. Way, way, way below what we expect out of them. That was um, – and that I'll take blame on trying to simplify things for them and ended up freezing them up. So created uh, created paralysis by uh, de-analysis, if you will. So, Vic, um, it, with regard to the linebackers, some of those positions are somewhat similar, like the mic and the bandit and can move around, but there's yes. also some variation there where you can't just flop guys around. But it seemed like you did some shift and like maybe Lindsey played – Lindsay bandit played or? some bandit for us, yes, sir. Well, and he actually got out ball. there, and he was another one that kind of froze up a little bit, and we, we had a hard time getting lined up tempo. Uh, that was one of the ones I was talking about, that we can't get out there and just act like we had never played before. Um, it's real hard to line up. If we say field, you line up to the field, and if we say bench, you line up to the boundary. So we got to do a better job with that. So. Neil and Matt talked about some changes maybe in the lineup. Uh, on your side of the ball, is that something you'll look at this week too? Or? Well, I think that um, when you get where, where you think someone can't do something or they won't do something, that's about the same. You either you can or, you know, uh, you can't or you won't. Uh, I don't think we have any guys yet at this point in time that have gotten to that where uh, we think they can't or they won't. I I 100% think our guys can, and that was the that was should have been the message that they got yesterday. And I showed them how they can by doing what their coaches are coaching them to do, and uh, not trying to do their own things. And uh, like I said, it isn't the first time that's ever happened. I use the 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 New England Patriots for example. So. Um, we're not to that point yet. I don't think we have any guys that are refusing to do. Now, if this continues to happen, then there's no doubt that we have to figure out, obviously, they won't do it. Like like on one of our touchdown runs, somebody just stopped, didn't lay out. Well, really? And then they didn't want to be coached, so the film showed him stopping and putting his hands up. Like, I said, come on, man, this isn't a shells practice. This ain't out there where you're not wanting to leave your feet in practice. So we we got to coach better, and we got to be more physical. And this the last thing we're going to do is be a soft soft outfit. And we we're going to be we're going to be dead gum going after it. And we got to change our our attitude or our approach or whatever. We're going to do it. So. I think you've done this a long time. Have you had a situation where? 
you go up against somebody who pretty much recruited your entire group uh, like this week? No, talking about Gibby. Yeah, um, it's not Baltimore. You can say Gibby, though. Uh, um, he's a good guy. Um, you know, I. Um, anyway, I I don't. There's no. I don't think there's anything. He, he's coaching for another team now and um, doing a really good job. They're they're shutting everybody down completely. They seem to be running a lot of stuff that he ran here, from what I'm told. Uh, I haven't really watched them on defense. I've got my plate full. Um, you know, there's there's no anything there. I mean, yeah, I'm sure some of the players are probably going to look forward to seeing him because he probably sat in their homes or whatnot. So, um, anyway, I, I would hope that our players feel like they're loved and they're parented and – you know, if there's any misgivings, then we'll find out and we'll find somebody else that wants to play.